It's killing me. I need it to be over. Oh, just making me think of the scene makes me upset. Hey guys, so um, as you can see, there's kind of a different background. I thought I'd just switch it up for this video because this is a very different video than anything that I've really done on my channel because I've never like gone into the idea of books on my channel. Well, actually, no, that's a lie. My channel originally was a lot more focused on books. It was like a booktube channel. That's where it all started. You won't see like any of those videos because I've like privated them all from like seven years ago. So you won't see any of those on my channel, but um, this is like a very different concept for me. I went onto the community page, community tab, and like asked you guys what you thought of me doing a series about book to movie adaptations, because I wanted to do something where I would read the book of a movie that I've already seen or maybe not seen yet um, and just sort of comparing the two. Analyzing the film and how it's adapted, like the, the screenplay, the adapted screenplay, because I've never read a book after watching a movie, I don't think, from what I can remember. I've never really gone into the idea of seeing how a film has adapted from its original source material, like having knowledge of both those things. And see, Lord of the Rings is my favorite trilogy of all time. It's my favorite film trilogy if you do not know, if you're not aware. And I thought Lord of the Rings was the perfect place to start because you guys seem to think it was a good idea. Like maybe I can go down this track, try it out. You know, this is a different concept to me. This is a whole new experience. This whole thing is a new experience for me. When it comes to books, I am not a high fantasy person at all. This is totally out of my element. I am more of a contemporary romance reader. I like first person point of view books. That is just my preference. That's what I lean towards what I enjoy the most. So this video is totally different for me. This is going to be a combination of myself discussing here as well as all of my reactions and my experience reading The Fellowship of the Ring. So this is going to be a three part series of all three books, even though I know this is one whole book. It is one book. Lord of the Rings is one book. It is across three books and each book is two chapters. So it's like six books within one book. Yep. Don't judge me for questions that I ask because I know that there's going to be hardcore book fans out there that are going to be like, that doesn't happen then. That doesn't happen then. This is stupid. Yes. I know. I know there are going to be people out there that are going to give me shit for this video. I'm aware of that. If you've read the source materials, thousands and thousands of times. If you've read the books and you're huge fans, obviously you're going to have that preference. You're going to know everything off by heart. This is a whole new thing for me. I will have a natural bias towards the films. That's just going to be an innate thing. This is, that's what's going to happen. It's not a conscious thing or anything like that. It's just because I love the films so much, but this is very much an analysis of the films as well, because I've never uh, sort of analyzed the films in a way where I'm comparing them to the source material. I've never done that before. I've analyzed the films in regards to how they've been created on their own, but never in relation to where that actual concept has come from. Um, and I like that idea of doing that for a series. Comparing book to movie adaptations and seeing how the film has done like good things, bad things, what they've left out, what they've added, that kind of thing. If you have not seen the movies and uh, read the book, there are going to be spoilers for both. So be aware of that. That's going to happen. I'm going to be talking about everything and anything. So yeah, if you haven't seen or read them or you don't care, be warned. I guess let's just jump straight into the vlog portion of this video of me reading Fellowship of the Ring and having emotions and feelings and yeah. One ring to rule them all. This is so old. Look at these like, look at that discoloration with the pages. It has my brother's name on the inside. So he read this when he was 12. So he said to me, if I can read it when I'm 12, you can read it when you're 28. Also, I purchased it on Audible because I like to listen with Audible while I'm reading the physical copy. Also, because I've seen the movies and I love the movies, I think that will be easier for me to visualize things as well. Things being described in the book are going to be different to how they are in the movie, obviously. So I'm going to be taking that into consideration, but... I think that's going to help me because it is very dense. Let's just bring this baby on this, this fat baby. Okay. All right. 
Let's just see how this goes. Today is my 100th birthday. I really like the um, party scene, the birthday party scene. So like in the movie, I thought it was great, but it's kind of cool seeing like all the quotes in the book are like the quotes in the movie. They've really taken a lot of things, especially the conversations between Gandalf and Bilbo, um, him leaving the ring, Frodo just sort of being like, oh, he's left me the ring. Okay, sure. I think in the book it's a little bit more subtle, like a passing moment. When he left the ring, that scene, I feel like the reason why it was more intense in the movie than in the book was because the time between Bilbo leaving the ring and them discovering what the ring actually is, like Gandalf and Frodo realizing shit, like one ring through them all, like that whole moment is decades between in the book. So I think in the book it makes sense that Bilbo leaving the ring isn't so dramatic compared to in the film. Honestly, Gandalf traveling to figure out what the um, ring is, like to get all the knowledge, gather all his information, that would take a very long time. In the film, time does really not exist <laughs> at all. Everything just happens super quick when it comes to people traveling places. But in the book, it kind of makes sense, I guess, that it's over like decades of time of them really gathering all the information that they need to actually figure out, oh shit, it's the ring. I think it's quite interesting the way that they actually integrated the characters into the birthday scene in the film. I think that was such a good way of illustrating the characters and introducing them for the first time in the movie when we haven't even met them yet in the book. I think they wrote that really well in the film, the way to integrate those two moments, the birthday scene, as well as introducing characters. You've been officially labelled a disturber of the peace. Wait, 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 let me pause this audiobook. Wait, wait, Frodo's 50? Frodo is 50 in the book? But it was not until Frodo approached the usually more sober age of 50 that he began to think it queer. A 50 year old is friends with like, with Merry and Pippin. Okay, he must be pretty cool. <laughs> I'm not like a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's like, you know, the entertaining uncle. You know, the uncle that people get along with, the youthful uncle. Well, I guess he still looks, they're saying that he still looks like he's in his tweens, like he hasn't aged. That was a surprise. That was an extreme surprise. Cause I remember people saying in my movie commentaries that he's older. That's why Frodo, that's why Frodo calls, no, that's why Sam calls Frodo, Mr. Frodo. Cause I was confused. He was the same age. Why is he calling him Mr. Frodo? But people were like, no, because he's older. And like he hired him like in the books. So that's why he calls him that. My main takeaway I think of Frodo being older is that like, what's their relationship dynamic gonna be? because in the film it's very much they're like friends because they seem like they're at least closer in age range. Frodo and Sam like hobbits in general they age differently than humans than man so obviously that can it's not always very clear. I don't think in the movies they've ever disclosed their ages so I'm kind of interested to see how that translates in book two and three like later into the story because I feel like their relationship and the way that they work off each other is going to be completely different in the book than in the film. In the film it's very much like a bromance. I just wanted to jump in quick because what I find really weird is that Frodo in the movie looks the same age as Sam, right? He looks exactly the same age. He can't be 50 in the movie because the reason why he looks younger in the book and looks the same age like he's in a tw as a tween is because he's had the ring for like 17 years right since Bilbo left so in the movie is it either that Peter Jackson changed his age because he's younger or he is just a continuity error so I just I mm, I don't know is it just me I don't I, mm, I don't know I don't know if someone can explain that to me it's just it's weird Frodo has to be Sam's age around there he can't be 50 in the movie because there is no excuse for why he looks so young because he hasn't had the ring. In regards to time, Frodo hasn't had the ring. He gets the ring right after Bilbo leaves. Can anyone explain that to me? All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. 
my favorite quote just came up and I'm so happy just reading it and oh my god. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Oh, Gandalf. I just, I read these quotes and I'm like, oh, I just think of, yeah, I, I just think of the moments and they make me so nostalgic and happy, like reading them and hearing them. What his right name is, I've never heard, but round here, he's known as Strider. First mention of Aragorn. I love Aragorn. Aragorn's my favorite character. So this mention of him is quite exciting. And actually, I, I don't remember anything from The Hobbit. So I don't remember any mentions. I know he was mentioned at the end of it. But the fact that he's actually, he actually met him and, and he tracked Gollum and brought Gollum to him. Like, they had a whole story of getting Gollum, the two of them. Well, that's cool. I, I like that he's mentioned in there, but only like subtly. He's very like a dismissive character the first time that Aragorn is brought up. I need more Aragorn. I need, I need, it's going to be ages. I'm only up to page 77 of how many pages is this book? Oh my God. There's 535 pages and I'm only up to 77. That's how far. <laughs> I need Aragorn. I am loving this so far. I am loving it. Oh my god. I didn't think I would in, like enjoy it just because it's so high fantasy. But once we got past the prologue and actually got into it, I am loving this. Like when we actually got into the story, like actual story of it with the characters, like getting through the prologue, it helped having the audiobook because I was like, oh my god, this is so much information. I am into this. I'm so into it. And I'm really excited because I, I want to binge the shit out of this book. I don't even want to stop reading it. I don't. And I'm not going to, at least for now. I think I've broken something. Is Mary even in this book? Is Mary... We have, like, we've met the elves. Like, where is Mary? Is Mary with Pippin in this? When... D <laughs> he, like, there's three of them. It's not a four. It's only a trio. Where is Mary? Oh no. Is Mary not in this? I don't know. I feel like I'm like projecting. Not projecting. I just, I feel like I'm re- I've, I've watched the movie so many times and like fallen in love with the characters so much that it's just, it's weird seeing all of this story unfold and not have Mary there. Like it's just weird. This is very strange reading this from the perspective after watching a movie. After watching the movie and then reading this book is very strange. Like, I just, I'm visualizing so much stuff and it's not happening how it happened in the movie. And like, I know it's not going to happen the same, but this is very different. This is extremely different. Where is Mary? One hour later. Mary. Mary's turned up. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Okay, that is good. Because if they didn't include Mary, in like the rest of the book, in the rest of the series, I'd be like, what the fuck? My brother also told me that the events actually in like book three are put into book two and book two into book one and like like everything sort of switched around. He said that a lot of stuff that is missing in book one is in book two or like, you know, it's all mixed up. So not to like get ahead of myself and expect things not to happen because they may like turn up in Two Towers and Return of the King. A shortcut. Shortcut to what? The mushrooms! Okay, the fact that Mary, Pippin, and Sam had like a conspiracy and knew about it the whole time, I am... I didn't really like that. Maybe it makes sense for the book, considering it's like many, many years that he has the ring, but I like that Mary and Pippin sort of discover it like along the way, and Sam, you know, he hears about it, but he doesn't really know all the descriptions and the details about the story, but... They've known all this time. All this time they've known about the ring. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think I really like that. Not quite my temple. I don't know. I just like how they're portrayed a little bit better in the movie, at least so far in the book. Like we are 145 pages in. That's the one thing that's kind of been like a little iffy with me, just reading the end of that chapter and them explaining, we've known this entire time. It's a conspiracy. We put it together. I guess they're smart in that way. Fool of a took. Throw yourself in next time and rid us of your stupidity. So I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion or if this is like 
sacrilegious if I shouldn't be saying this. But this Tom Bombadil chapter is just... It's killing me. I need it to be over. Like, it's just going on forever. Like, there's just... He's singing so much. I'm like... <laughs> I see that in two, two chapters time, they finally get to um, the Prancing Pony. And the chapter's called Strider. So, I just... I need to get to that chapter. And I need to push through this. But Tom Bombadil is just, oh my god, he's so frustrating. I just need, I need this chat to be over. I need it to be over. It's just, is there any point to it? Is that bad? Is, I should, I, should, I, should I be saying this? Is this, is this like against all things? Am I being like really, really bad saying that? Is that an unpopular opinion? I kind of feel bad saying it. Like, no, you know what? I don't feel bad saying it. I don't. Because I need to give my honest opinions about how I'm feeling things. You know, not everyone likes every single aspect of a book. I just, I can't. I can't with this chapter. Oh, just, I just... Mm, I am happy they cut him out of the movies because this chapter is so fucking boring. I was actually talking to my godmother the other day about the books because she is a huge fan of the books. Like, she's read them many, many times over the decades. She reads them every year and she does not like the movies. She doesn't like them. Um, and she told me that when she first read The Lord of the Rings that she didn't like Tom Bombadil either. But upon reread, she, like, grew to love the character and that he's very much all about the environment and his, his message of his character is all about nature and loving the environment and that kind of thing. So yeah, who knows, maybe if I reread Lord of the Rings down the track I'll end up falling for him, but I just, I can't help but not like him. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, I'm apo officially apologising for not liking Tom Bombadil. The chapter's finally over. I curled my hair while listening to her just passing the time. <laughs> I need to get my hair curled. I curled my hair. It looks short now, but it'll drop. I needed to pass the time. I'm so happy the chapter's over. I'm so happy. And Strider is turning up soon. They mentioned uh, Rangers. They mentioned Rangers, and I'm like, yes, give me Aragorn. But to disappear entirely, that is a rare gift. Just then, we got the quote of, um, not all those who wander are lost. And that's also one of my favorite quotes. It's weird because it just, the audiobook's just like, blah, 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 all, not all those who wander are lost. And I'm like, Aragorn said that? Aragorn said that? Okay. Didn't, didn't expect, didn't expect it. I like the betrayal of Aragorn's introduction in the films more than the book, just because his involvement is as a random person in their journey because it's like someone who's just stumbled into their story to help him get them get to Rivendell and all that kind of stuff. If you want him, come and claim him. We just finished um, book one and now we're on to book two. So we got to the part where he's on the horse the horses riding, we get to the river, all that. The Black Riders takes the Black Riders out. It was so much better with Arwen. I'm sorry. That whole scene is so much more badass and awesome. I don't know. It wasn't as exciting. And I know a lot of people are going to say, you're comparing the book to the film way too much. Like, the, this is the point of the video. The point of the video is to compare the film and the book. I think people are going to be like, Maybe in the comments saying you love the films too much so you're not giving the book a chance. That is not true. At all. That is absolutely not true. I am loving the book. There are obviously things that aren't going, like, I'm going to prefer for the movies. Because, yes, I'm nostalgic. But, like, I'm really enjoying it. So there's six chapters. The whole first chapter, which is, how many pages? 283 pages, is just their journey just to Rivendell. So now book two, which is less than half of the book, is the part with the Fellowship. So the Fellowship of the Ring, less than half of this book is actually the Fellowship. Like, only that last moment have things really, like, happened. Nothing really has happened. That's sort of been like, bam, something's happened. You know what I mean? And I feel like 
we don't have many other of those moments. We, we have more of those moments with the fellowship. I think when it comes to the book, the whole journey of them is them sort of like world building by meeting random characters, like one off characters, like Tom. It is something to just create more of a atmosphere, you know, that, that world building that's created when they meet one off characters. Whereas in the movie, I think it's more about establishing the cast, really setting up this, this group of people. So when it comes to their journey in getting to the Prancing Pony, to Rivendell, they only really meet people that are important to the trilogy as a whole, which makes sense because I think this movie would go forever if they were meeting random characters the whole, the whole way through. In the film, the responsibility is we're going to Mordor. This is what we need to do. That's our purpose. Whereas in the book, it's very much what is this world? What is Middle Earth? Who are the people within it? I think that's why like the pacing is slower because you have so much more time to establish those things compared to the in the film where you have time constraints and you need to focus on what's important, which are developing the main cast of characters in the films over the trilogy. And now we're on to Rivendell, which I love. I love Rivendell. I love Elrond. I can't wait till we meet Arwen. Can we meet Arwen? Can we please meet Arwen? Don't know if we're going to get romantic moments. Is there a whole thing with Arwen and Aragorn in the books? I hope so, because they're one of my favorite couples and I really want to be able to read about them. So can we get that, please? I would like that. Frodo! Frodo! I thought I'd lost you. What are you talking about? Okay, all right. So I just want to read this like couple of sentences. I like, I didn't, I, I don't even know what to think. Okay, so at this current moment, Frodo is getting ready to leave his room to go to the council meeting. Okay, let me just read this, this section. At the moment, there was a knock on the door and Sam came in. He ran to Frodo and took his left hand awkwardly and shyly. He stroked it gently and then he blushed and turned hastily away. Is it just me? Is it just me? Are they picking up vibes? Vibes? Sam? Sam? Is anyone getting those vibes? I don't know if I'm reading into this. I tend to read into things a lot. Why am I thinking that Sam has feelings for Frodo? It's not, it's, it's not, but I just found that the wording of that sentence quite insinuating, if you know what I mean. Also, I find it really um, interesting actually how they describe Gandalf's hair because his hair is long and white with a silver beard and snowy eyebrows. What I kind of like actually is in the movies, they changed his hair color. Because he's Gandalf the Grey in the first film, his hair is gray. Whereas, you know, in the book it's white. And then obviously in Two Towers and Return of the King, he's Gandalf the White. And his hair has turned white. His beard is white. So I kind of like in the films that they've changed that. I like that in the first movie he had gray hair and not white hair. That also distinguished him from Sauron. Not Sauron, Saruman. He distinguished the two of them as well, him and Christopher Lee. I think that's actually a really good character change. That's actually one change I really like that they did in the films, I think, in regards to his design, his hair. I think that was really smart. The Council of Elrond chapter, fucking hell. This goes on forever. This is such a long chapter. <laughs> one does not simply walk into Mordor. It's black gates are guarded by more than just orcs. One thing that I've realized, well not really realized, so we started with the fellowship, they've started their like trek, their journey together to, to Mordor, they've left Rivendell, but the thing is is that there's, I don't really have any emotional connection to like any of the characters. Like I mean you're meant to care for them, but I feel like I haven't really gotten like a personality, like none of them really have a personality. I know that that might sound really, really harsh. The only person that I kind of get a feeling of what they're kind of like is Boromir. Because from the language and his opinion, his thoughts on what they should do with the ring, you can tell the type of person that he is. 
like his wants and ambitions you can tell he's that kind of person I just feel like I haven't gotten any personalities from like a lot of the characters they're just kind of characters I guess maybe because there's been so much world building so much has happened like there's 150 pages left right so they've only just started their journey like the fellowship they haven't gone to Moria they haven't gone into the mountains yet like nothing like that so they haven't gotten to that point yet but like if Gandalf's death is in this I'm assuming it's in this like I won't care if he dies so yeah I don't really know how to feel right now about the characters the characters are what's kind of disappointing me the characters are very important and I am drawn to books that are character driven um, that may be why I'm feeling disconnected from the book right now. If I hadn't seen the movies, and if any of the characters died, I'd be like, oh, okay, sure. And it wasn't even that big of a deal when Frodo's like, I'll take the ring. They're like, oh yeah, it seems like that, that's, that's, that, that's suitable, you should do it. It, like, wasn't like a, oh, Frodo, you want to take this, like, responsibility on your shoulders and go all the way to Mordor? and destroy the ring like this is a big deal mate like you're taking on a huge responsibility for the entire lord of the rings universe all of middle earth you're taking this responsibility and it's like oh yeah frodo you take the ring you can have a few companions along the way with you like it's it's made like it's not even that big of a deal when it is middle earth will die if he gets the ring if sauron gets the ring so much of this is important of what is happening to this world and I don't know, I don't know. The, can the Council of Elrond chapter really threw me. I don't know if that's a hot take. Is that a hot take that I don't care about the characters whatsoever? You shall not pass! The dark fire will not avail you, flame of Odun. Go back to the shadow, you cannot pass. And the thongs lashed and curled about the wizard thieves, dragging him to the brink. He staggered and fell, grasped vainly at the stone and slid into the abyss. Fly, you fools, he cried, and was gone. Mournful now and slow, doom. They ran on. The light flew before them. Great shafts pierced the roof. They ran swifter. Some standing and silent. Some cast upon the ground. Doom, doom. The drum beats faded. Chapter 6. Lothlorien. Just let me compose myself for a second. Okay. This, that chapter in the Mines of Moria is intense the bridge scene was very much similar to how it was in the movie the intensity of the moment of gandalf on the bridge with everything that was he's saying and you shall not pass and you wait you shall not pass you cannot pass you cannot pass he says the first time you cannot pass he says the second time he definitely says you cannot pass the first time when he swings around and faces the balrog for the first time you cannot pass Oh, just making me think of the scene makes me upset. I think the events hit pretty closely in regards to how things play out. Like the actual scene of Gandalf falling, fly you fools, like all that kind of stuff. Like it hits, but um, the emotional weight to it doesn't. The Minds of Moria scene. When it comes to Gandalf with you shall not pass compared to you cannot pass. I prefer you shall not pass in the films. The reason being is shall not is more like Gandalf saying I am not permitting you from doing this. Like I am stopping you physically. I ca I'm not allowing you to. Whereas when you say you cannot pass it's simply saying you can't do it. Just that weight of that language I think is better in the film. Honestly I think that line is more impactful and makes more sense coming from Gandalf in that context. You shall be the Fellowship of the Ring. Great. Where are we going? I find it kind of interesting that, like, um, when they decided in their journey in the film that from Rivendell, the Fellowship were going, they were all going to go to Mordor. They were all going to go to destroy the Ring. Like, I assume that that's what the Fellowship's purpose was to help Frodo to get to Mordor. To destroy the ring but in the book it's like there's two separate directions when they're leaving Galadriel you can either go east or west you know you're going to go to Minas Tirith which is where Boromir wants to go because he wants to take the ring he doesn't want to get rid of the ring he wants to use it it's unsaid like he said it out loud and then corrects himself 
because he doesn't want it to come across that way, but everyone knows it. But then you can either go the other way, which is to Mount Doom. And so I thought that, you know, that they were had a clear choice, but apparently Gandalf hadn't even told them what they were going to do. And now that he's died, they don't know what direction or what their actual course of action was. He was the only person that knew. Like, obviously, Frodo knew that he was the one that was going to bear the ring and take it to Mount Doom. Like, he knew that. But they didn't know what their course of action and, like, how they were going to go about it. And apparently, Boromir's like, I'm going back to Minas Tirith. And Aragorn doesn't know what he's doing. I'm, I'm a bit confused. I'm like, did they not know what what was going to go down? I just kind of thought that they knew what their journey was and what the purpose of the fellowship was, which were, you know, Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, Boromir, Merry and Pippin were along the way, along on the ride. Sam was there to protect Frodo. They were all there to protect him so they could get there and destroy the ring. Like, that was the purpose of it all, to save Middle-earth and destroy the ring. So I, I'm a bit confused about why they don't know what they're meant to do. I assume Elrond and um, and Gand Gandalf knew um, how they were going to go about it, but they never disclosed that to the rest of them. I find that very strange. Like, I find that really weird that they didn't have, like, any, like, idea of how they were actually going to do it, because now Gandalf's dead. Some of them want to go back to the Shire, and some, and some want to go to Minas Tirith. Gimli's like, yeah, I can leave. Um, the whole idea of their unity as a group feels very disconnected in the book. Like, they know the purpose, but they don't feel like a team. That they're, they're there for each other to protect each other, like, like a brotherhood. Like, it doesn't feel like that. Okay, so we finished the book. I finished it. I am very, very proud of myself that I finished the book, finally. So yes, I am aware that it's six chapters, that it's not actually like three individual books. Like I understand that it's one book. So I had to take that into consideration. But if I'm reading this as just an individual book on its own, I don't know. I don't know. So the ending, we had the part where Boromir, you know, you fool, and he tried to take the ring off um, Frodo, and then Frodo and Sam left. But we didn't have anything to do with the orcs. We didn't have Borom Boromir's death. Apparently, they're going to Minas Tirith. Does Boromir even die? Does he die in the books? Like, I just, I'm so confused, because the ending to this book is so different to the film completely different. We know that Frodo and Sam are off, Gollum is going to be tracking them obviously, but we don't know what's in the works for any of the others. Part where Boromir is like, you know, get, getting aggressive with Frodo and everything, like that felt similar to the movie. Reading the scene and imagining Sean Bean and he's like, when he yells at Frodo, he's like, you fool! And just like, oh my god, it just reminded me of the scene so much. Like, the language, the way he said it, um, just how it um, came to be, how the scene sort of progressed, it was exactly like in the movie. So that, like, translated really, really well. I was just getting to the end of the book, and I'm, like, getting to the last couple of pages, and I'm like, oh... Like, the only thing that's really close to the ending is the Boromir Frodo, like, altercation. That's the only similarity with really the ending and then Frodo and Sam leaving. That's my general thoughts coming out of reading this. It's strange. It's very strange for me reading from this perspective. It's a little weird for me to separate the two because I am visualizing certain things when I read it. But just as a book in general, I don't know if it's my taste. That's the thing. It's not my type of book. I've never read a book like this, ever. And so this is like an experience for me reading this book. Like it's something completely new for me. And I have enjoyed the experience of reading the first book. I definitely will do the second and third. I definitely will read them at some point, but I need to take a break 
from reading Lord of the Rings books. Like I can't jump straight into the second one just yet. It's definitely set itself up to continue. I am just excited to get to Rohan. I think that's what I'm most excited about. But it's going to be also weird because the story is going to be split up. Like in the movies, I assume it's going to be like in the book. In the movies, it's going to be similar for our Two Towers and Return of the King because you have the two groups. You have Frodo and Sam with Gollum and then you have everyone else. I'm actually kind of interested whether Boromir is going to die or not. Does he die? Because there's a whole thing with Faramir and his brother and... and um. De Denethor, Denethor, that's their dad, right? Is that his name? I think that's his name. Yeah, there's that whole thing. So I'm just interested to see what goes down with that. Anyways, they're my thoughts on Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, part one. Well, let me know your thoughts on The Fellowship of the Ring, The Lord of the Rings, the book, the film, um, if you've seen both. All that kind of stuff. Let me know your thoughts because I'd like to get an idea of what people think. Obviously, there are going to be diehard fans out there. Obviously, that is going to happen. I understand that. So just let me know what you think. If I should continue on with Two Towers, Return of the King, I kind of want to, so I think I will. Let me know what you think of this kind of format to have occasionally on my channel. What do you think of book to movie adaptations? Should I, should I keep doing this? Let me know your thoughts. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.